And so I'm very happy to uh, welcome on the stage Jason Jones, who is the co-founder of Bungie and the Halo project lead. Halo is the name of this game, and we're going to see, for the first time, Halo. The first person shooter that turned a generation of boomers into jaded outcasts with its revolutionary controls and mechanics that still plague the landscape of the gaming industry to this day. The sort of okay story and setting that was kind of interesting but certainly wasn't the citizen cane of video games. The Gregorian chants and Roland Synth presets of Marty O'Donnell, blessed be his name. The greasy bastard that ruined the PC port of the original game which then got ported to the Xbox 360 and would not be fixed until at least a decade. Fuck you, Randy. All of these things are why I love this game so much, beside the fact I've been playing this game before I was old enough to attend primary school and have continued playing this for more time I've spent making any contribution to society in any meaningful way. But who cares about that, society is doomed and I couldn't be happier if I still had the capacity to even be happy about anything in life. But Halo is one of those things. And no matter how old I get I'll still come back to play this game. But how do you play it? What's the best way to play Halo? Right difficulty, mouse and keyboard, the end. No, you know what kind of video this is even if this isn't my thing in this kind of series is already pioneered by with his pro video series, but I don't ever expect him to do one for Halo. Even if I were to kindly ask and then get immediately blocked by him for asking in the first place. So I'll do it myself, with the power invested in me in this shitty text to speech voice that Rob Swire used in Blood Sugar before it was cool to use it in those shitty ask reddit videos. I introduced to you, the first installment of the maybe this will be an ongoing thing maybe this will never happen again series, sewer gaming. Side note, I'm using this text to speech not only because I'm lazy, but I think it's really funny. Because I like to suffer eternally we will be playing Halo on Legendary, and hopefully I won't suck so bad at playing it on Legendary that some speedrunning freak of nature will make me look like shit by comparison. But I know it's gonna happen either way, so here we go. We begin our great journey on the Pillar of Autumn, a ship that looks like the Sulaco but with diabetes, flying towards your mom to go give her a bunch of flowers. Some of you folks may be thinking that last sketch was pretty disgusting. Well, I'm here to say, no, it isn't. Because sometimes a bunch of flowers is a way of saying, I love you. Sis. Then you wake up in the walking speed boots of the LD brand Doom Guy, the Master Chief. Yeah, I thought his or her name would be Halo as well. Missed opportunity if you ask me, especially the she part. Come on, we've got to get the hell out of here. You now have to make your way to the bridge. This way. Along the way you can stop to notice the environmental storytelling of people dying with lots of explosions going off everywhere. Just without a live leak logo in the left hand corner. I'm a cowardly fool. It's not anything like Half-Life, where you're put into a mundane setting before all hell goes loose in game. It does give me some System Shock 2 vibes given the intro and the similarities of the ship's design, just without the kick-ass drum and bass. Once you've arrived to the bridge, you're then told to abandon ship, and you're tasked with escorting and protecting an artificial intelligence called Cortana, and throughout the franchise, she evolves and turns even more sexualized before 343 Industries finally gave her some clothes. It took them 20 years to finally do that. But not before depicting her in the most sexualized way she's ever been since Halo Legends, where they got a bunch of anime studios to do short films about the franchise like the Animatrix. It's actually pretty good, for fuck's sake. One of them is made by the guys who did Dragon Ball Z. But you know what? I'm one heck of a mama myself! Anyways, you shove her deep into your brain where all the voices are, so she can be another one of those. Your architecture isn't much different from the autos. Don't get any funny ideas. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. Hold on a second. I have to do something real quick. What the hell are you doing? I shot him. You're all mad at me now, but later on you'll thank me. Now
Now let's get to business with the introduction of what I'd consider this game's version of the BFG. The Magnum. Or as I like to call it, the son of a bitch machine. And we're gonna be pointing this bad boy at the head of everyone's favorite food nipple enjoyers, the grunts. One of many species in the covenant, which looks and behaves like a QAnon or Proud Boys rally but probably smells better. But anyways, the grunts are small, thirsty, comes in groups and run away with shit in their pants at the mere sight of the chief just like League of Legends players when they see. Check this out. Oh. I think you can see your kidneys. But you will too, when you meet the elites, split-lipped warting bastards with plasma rifles, shields, and a slightly annoying habit of killing you in mere seconds on Legendary. This problem will become more evident in the next game. We just thank a higher power that these things aren't hit scanners and that an overcharged plasma pistol shot will drain their shields so you can Shoot him in the fucking head! The assault rifle in this game as iconic as it isn't as useful as it would be on lower difficulties is virtually useless here because of how the weapon mechanics work in this game. You and the marines have hit scan weapons that only work effectively on enemies without shields while the covenant mostly have energy based projectile weapons that work best on shielded enemies, meaning you. And so for most of the game you'll be carrying an energy based weapon and the magnum purely because of how easy it is to die to a elite on legendary without utilizing these weapon mechanics, getting your timing right, and understanding telegraphed attacks and movements, hence why I suggested heroic instead of legendary. You'll also have two types of grenades, frag and plasma, the frags are good at taking out groups of enemies and giving you a chance to breathe during a firefight since the elites will stop shooting to evade, and the plasma grenade, which takes longer to detonate but can stick to enemies and in most cases it's an instant kill. This mission overall isn't the best ever, it's purely an introduction to the game and its mechanics. But you better learn how to make the most of them because Halo on Legendary will not be merciful. Despite being the only person not wearing a seatbelt in the escape pod, you're the only survivor and now we get into one of many stunning moments of Halo. The atmosphere. The music. The feeling of not knowing where the fuck you're supposed to go. Sometimes you can get lost in this game either because of rooms and hallways being copied and pasted, or simply because the world around you can be too open-ended. But all levels are going to be linear and it's important to keep that in mind if you're a beginner. But I assume anyone with a brain cell understands that this is just commonplace in first-person shooters or games in general. Good thing this isn't a hex and switch hunt though. Eventually you'll end up at a forerunner platform. What's a forerunner? Why are we landing on the surface of a massive ring in space that for some reason has atmosphere and environment on it? Why is the New South Wales Deputy Premier look greasier than Randy Pitchford? My god, you're greasy. We may never know. The previous comment was by all means and purposes a joke at the expense of John Giovanni Barilero's appearance and not a commentary on alleged accusations of corruption. It is only my opinion that John Giovanni Barilero looks greasy as shown in a photo of him. I am not accusing John Giovanni Barilero of anything other than looking greasy. Please do not send the New South Wales fixated person's investigation to list to my doorstep to assault me over a joke. And Jesus fucking Christ, the fact I even have to say this unironically is scary but above all else pathetic as I think the last thing a deputy premier should be concerned about is what some random person on the internet has to say about them or their affiliates. There is no freedom of speech in this country. Have a pleasant day. Vote Labour and Greens. Sincerely, June. For most of this mission it's mostly about cleaning up waves of enemies in different spots of the map in order to rescue marines and regroup to find Captain Keys, who got captured by the Covenant. Speaking of which, there's now one new addition to the list of things to shoot, jackals, a minor inconvenience, for now. And the introduction to two new weapons, the Needler, which shoots crystals which track enemies and explode after sticking a certain amount to them but only when they have no shields, and the sniper rifle. One of two power weapons in this game that isn't the yes, I, son of a bitch machine. that can one shot most enemies with a well placed headshot. Ammo for the sniper rifle is few and far between so make sure your aim is true and make each shot count.
you'll also be introduced to the puma, I mean warthog, seats 3 with 1 being a gunner. Gives you a great opportunity to do some sick drifting. This cave is not a natural formation. Someone built it, so it must lead somewhere. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. The enemy has captured Captain Keys and are holding him aboard one of their cruisers, the Truth and Reconciliation. The ship is currently holding position approximately 300 meters above the other end of this plateau. So how do we get inside the ship if it's in the air? The Corps issued me a rifle, not wings. There's a gravity lift that buries troops and supplies between the ship and the surface. That's our ticket in. Once we get inside the ship, I should be able to lock on to the tracking signal to Captain Key's neural implants. Hit a Marines! Go, go, go! The Corps ain't paying us by the hour! Now that you have a small batch of Marines by your side that basically do nothing, except die and maybe they'll drop a grenade or kill you with one by accident. Now you're tasked with infiltrating a Covenant ship to rescue the captain, and you may notice at the beginning that you have a generous amount of ammunition for your sniper rifle. This is the one and only time in the entire game you'll get an opportunity like this, so savor it. You'll also notice the shade turrets, which are a total nuisance since if you don't kill the grunts or elites using them and don't manage to flip the turret over with a grenade, they'll end up using it again to deliver more pain. And using them yourself just makes you a sitting duck, and even on lower difficulties it's just not fun to use. Riveting. Then you'll be dealing with more waves of Covenant coming from the ship itself, and at some point you'll feel like the game is softlocked, endlessly spawning more enemies, but eventually, after god knows how many of those damned things you had to kill, you're now up against the Hunters. A violent and disgusting orgy of worms, now that I'm saying that, it sounds like it would be better suited as a description for nude beaches in Australia, they one shot you with fuel rod cannons and slap the shit out of you with their shield. In the sequels they are stronger and overall they become a bigger threat to deal with, but this is Halo 1. So let's give them the key special. Keep it up, keep it up. Get up so I can kill you again. This part is where things become painful. In this room there are waves of enemies and now there's stealth elites. They're invisible bastards with energy swords that can kill you with one hit. You can see them, but the marines cannot, so they end up killing all your marines if you don't kill them fast enough. They also spawn zealots, one of the most dangerous elites in the game. They can take 3 sniper shots before going down and will either wield energy swords or plasma rifles. The ones with plasma rifles are worse, the ones with energy swords chase you down, and that will usually be enough time for you to take them out before they get to you. But the ones with plasma rifles will spam their shots to the point where their rifles overheat. They suck.
And they spawn multiple times in this room and can catch you by surprise if you aren't paying attention because of all the shit going on around you. Great. And then two more hunters show up. And then there's this bullshit. Come on, put him up, Pat. Come on. Coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Thanks. Marines, lock and load your weapons. Let's be ready to move. Okay, yes, sir. While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. They call it Halo. One moment, sir. Accessing the Covenant battle net. According to the data in their networks, the ring has some kind of deep religious significance. If I'm analyzing this correctly, they believe that Halo is some kind of weapon, one with vast, unimaginable power. And uh, it's true. The Covenant kept saying that whoever controls Halo controls the fate of the universe. Now I see. I have intercepted a number of messages about a Covenant search team scouting for a control room. I thought they were looking for the bridge of a cruiser that I damaged during the battle above the ring. But they must be looking for Halo's control room. That's bad news. If Halo is a weapon, and the Covenant gain control of it, they'll use it against us and wipe out the entire human race. Chief, Cortana, I have a new mission for you. We need to beat the Covenant to Halo's control room. Marines, let's move! Yes, sir! Okay, sir! Chief, you have the point. Now you need to escort Keys and the remaining Marines to a dropship to end the mission. But you'll just have to make sure he doesn't get killed by the stealth elites waiting in the bridge, or the other waves of Covenant that spawn. But the most likely scenario, Key's getting himself killed because he walked in front of you while you were shooting. Or being terrible at throwing grenades, sometimes when there's no reason for him to do so. You fuckhead. The Covenant believe that what they call the Silent Cartographer is somewhere under this island. The Cartographer is a map room that will lead us to Halo's control center. The island has multiple structures and installations. One of them contains the map room. I don't have that much to say about this one because it's a good mission that just needs to be experienced firsthand. It's one of Halo's better missions and it's entirely open so you can approach it however way you want. And you get yourself a rocket launcher here too. And it does what a rocket launcher ought to do. Kill things dumb enough to get in its way. Also, helpful tip. When you get past the locked door to the cartographer, there's a ledge you can jump off and if you land on the overshield just right.
You'll take no falling damage. Center is located there. That structure appears to be some sort of temple or shrine, if I've interpreted this correctly. Interesting. A shrine is an unlikely place to put such a significant display. Now you just have to kill all the Covenant you skipped past on your way out. Off he will fuck. Another good mission. If you don't think about all the copied and pasted rooms you're going through, but between all those are big open areas for you to mess around with vehicles like warthogs, ghosts, a scorpion which is good for taking out wraiths and can only be used just this once in the entire game, and a banshee if you're quick enough to kill an elite before it takes off with it. There's also plenty of sniper rifle and rocket launcher ammo at your disposal so make the most of it while it's there. It's a pain that you're required to juggle around your weapons because of the two weapon carry limit introduced to the game, which initially this wasn't actually going to be a mechanic in the old Macintosh demos of Halo, but had to be included for the sake of the Xbox controller mapping to make sense. 
except the Half-Life 2 Xbox port was able to pull off a multi-weapon selection with the use of the D-pad, which isn't even utilized in Halo by any means. But whatever. Also quick mention to the Half-Life 2 Xbox port. It is the worst way to experience Half-Life 2, not because of the awful downscale graphics, or the inconsistent frame rate which mind you was capped at 30 frames, but because of the loading screens. We're getting off track, but I really needed to express my frustration about the sport since I had to play it growing up. As far as the story goes by this point, you're trying to get to Halo's control room to stop the Covenant from using it as a weapon against humanity. All things considered, the Covenant don't need to go through all of this work to accomplish this goal by any means, because we're doing a better job at ending all life on this planet ourselves. This is it. Halo's control center. wealth of information. The knowledge, so much, so fast. It's glorious. So, what sort of weapon is it? What are you talking about? Let's stay focused. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? This ring isn't a cudgel, you barbarian. It's something else. Something much more important. The Covenant were right. This ring, it's Forerunner. Give me a second to access it. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... Wait. No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. The Covenant found something. Buried in this ring. Something horrible. And now, they're afraid. Something buried? Where? The Captain. We've got to stop the Captain. Keys? What the are we... weapons cache he's looking for. It's not really... We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here, find Keys, stop him. Before it's too late! Okay, so Keys is gonna open up a weapons cache that could fuck the situation up more than it already is and now we have to go stop him from doing that? Sure, why not? It's not like I was already given the opportunity to prevent all this from happening by killing this dumb motherfucker four fucking missions ago. But sure, what could possibly go wrong? This is where the game takes a violent shit in tone. Where this game went from being fun alien genocide to an unnerving horror experience. I can vividly remember how terrified I was of this mission when I first played it as a kid. Just watch.
you'll notice that throughout this mission there's no aliens, just grunts and jackals. Which shown before, are scared shitless by something that isn't you. Which can't be a good sign of things to come. Everything is quiet. There's a group of jackals defending a doorway that's covered in blood. And an unknown greenish substance dripping onto the ground around you. And for some reason you can hear the sound of a mukbang ASMR video being recorded on the other side of this door. Nothing is right here, and it doesn't feel like the work of the marines, which there are none to be found. Only a few that are dead, but you do end up finding one marine though. Stay back! Stay back! You're not turning me into one of those things! I'll blow your brains out! Get away from me! Don't touch me, you freaks! I won't be like you, I'll die first! Find your own hiding place, the monsters are everywhere! Play dead, that's what I did, play dead. They took the live ones. Oh god, I can still hear them. Monsters! Just leave me alone! Sarge, Mendoza, Masani. Oh god, the things took them away. They're gone! Get it? Gone! They won't get me! Oh god! Oh god, I don't wanna be like them, please! Please no! Please no! This is how I feel when people try to get me to listen to Tame Impala. So after that experience, you finally find the supposed weapons Cash Cortana was talking about. Stuff, Sarge. Watch your mouth, son. This stuff is your history. It should remind you, Grunts, what we're fighting to protect. Hey, does the governor want to wipe out this particular part of my history? That's fine by me. He's yeah, better it than us. You ask real nice next time you see him, Vicente. I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige. Now, Z looks clear. I'm bringing us down. Go, go, go! Stay close, Jenkins! Mendoza, move it up! Wait here for the captain and his squad, then get your ass inside. Sir! Okay, let's move! Oh, which is weird, right? I mean, look at it. Something scrambled the insides. 
What's that? Plasma scoring? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there was an accident, you know, friendly fire or something? What do we have, Sergeant? Looks like a Covenant patrol. Badass elite units. All KIA. Real pretty. Friend of yours? Nah, we just met. Right, well, let's get this door open. I'll try, hey. sir. But it looks like these Covenant worked pretty hard to lock it down. Just do it, son. Yes, sir. About this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain something. Sergeant, can you hear me? What's going on, soldier? You've got contact! Lost them! But they're not coming in! They're, they're just tearing through us! What the flow? No! Corporal! Do you copy? Over! Mendoza, get your ass back up to second squad's position and find out what the hell is going on. But I don't have time for your lift, soldier. I gave you an Sarge, order. Sarge, listen. What is that? Where's that coming from, Everywhere. Mendoza? I don't... There! Mira! Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Hold oh, still. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. The Flood, a parasitic space zombie fungus made from the corrupted dust of shape-shifting primordial gods what the fuck am I reading? Anyways that's the reason why you haven't been seeing elites, marines, or their bodies anywhere. They all got infected by the Flood. For some reason you never see infected grunts or jackals, and I assume it has to do with the fact that the Flood only infect life that possesses intelligence and so Bungie saw that as a joke at the expense of how dumb their AI is, or they were lazy and I just gave them a convenient excuse for it. Now your only goal is to get the hell out of here, but good luck figuring out where to go though. But later on, throughout this unraveling nightmare, you'll find the way, and the light. Except occasionally the light is muzzle flash. The shotgun. I fucking hate Halo, right? But Halo has a good shotgun. If I didn't give the Magnum the title of Anti son of a bitch machine, then this would be the gun to deserve it. This is one of the best weapons in the game. Does high damage, lots of ammo, works on just about everything, even banshees and wraiths if you're determined. And if CV11 can tell you that this is a good shotgun, then what more praise do you need? But you're not going to be relieved for long, because now the Flood can use weapons. All of them. By the way those infection forms, you know, these things, will instantly kill the marines if they touch them. This will happen to most enemies as well. Be grateful they don't turn them into combat forms immediately or reanimate dead flood.
<laughs> Greetings. I am the monitor of installation 04. I am 343 Beauty Spark. Someone has released the flood. My function is to prevent it from leaving this installation, but I require your assistance. Come, this way. Things can't get much worse. Surely. The library, the worst mission of Halo. It is nothing but copied and pasted rooms, endlessly spawning flood with the introduction to carrier forms, swollen gas bags of pain that spawn more infection forms and cause any and all grenades in its immediate area to explode. They will even launch other carrier forms to detonate wherever they land. Pain, fucking pain. And there are multiple times where you'll need to wait and kill hundreds of these damn things before you can progress further into this descent into madness that continues to escalate. I blame Tyson for this whole thing. Even on the lower difficulties this mission is still one of the worst. In no way is this fun or exciting like the rest of the game has been, for the most part. And it only gets slightly better from here on out. Because this game was rushed into development for the launch of the Xbox and most likely due to a lack of time and resources, they would end up recycling the earlier levels with different settings. This doesn't make them awful missions but it doesn't make them any better than they already were. If anything, it makes them worse by comparison. And now, we need to talk about the Rocket Launcher Flood. Who in who, who came up with Rocket Launcher Flood? Is that, was, I remember playing this level and then when they showed up, I'm like, what? I mean, that's just obvious, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think anybody had to come up with the universe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that it, it defined itself. Who, in their right minds, thought this was okay? Who, would be so sadistic enough, to give us this unholy abomination? And it gets worse, in later missions, they put these things in narrow and cramped areas of the mission for you to get blasted in the face. Hell, even in the Halo beta they have the audacity to give the flood flamethrowers, and even include a rocket launcher flood in the corridors of the final mission just to fuck with you. This violates the Geneva Conventions, and yet despite this atrocity's existence, there is still a being so foul, so punishingly cruel, so uncompromisingly evil, that it would make Lucifer fall to his knees, and weep tears of endless oceans. However, as I was playing this mission, I realized that it wasn't as difficult as others have had me believe with how much shit this mission gets albeit well deserved. I died more times on assault on the control room and it took me twice as long to finish. Bit assault on the control room isn't a bad level by design. It's purely a difficulty spike that set me back and made me frustrated at how many times I died trying to finish it. Unlike the library, which is just awful in its design and has nothing of interest besides a few nice looking textures and some creepy ambient music to set the tone of what is a bland mission. It's blatantly obvious that it was rushed and not enough thought or care was put into it to make it something that isn't CBT for the brain. And I didn't even need to know the developers' opinions to have come to this conclusion. You get the index, the key to activating the Halo ring to use as a weapon against the flood. The energy barrier surrounding the index will deactivate when we reach the ground floor. Yay. That was totally worth all the bullshit I went through to get it. I sure hope this doesn't end up being pointless and unnecessary. It was pointless and unnecessary. Cortana stops you from using the index to activate Halo to tell you that Halo is in fact a weapon of mass destruction that was designed for the specific purpose of killing all life in the universe that could be infected by the flood, so that's good to know. Now your objective is to stop this light bulb from activating it without the use of the index. Again, I ask, what the fuck was the point of all of that? In any case, this is just assault on the control room but in reverse and without a tank and with lots, and I mean lots, of rocket launcher flood. But you do get to use a banshee as it was originally intended if you didn't figure out how to board one beforehand. 
I can say at the very least I like how this mission looks, even if it's just turning assault on the control room from light theme to dark. The dark theme is always the preferred choice by people with taste. However, it was here that I reached a dead stop. Where I found myself constantly dying to bullshit too many times for me to endure much more after having already suffered enough from truth and reconciliation, assault on the control room, and the library in one sitting. There isn't enough pipeline punch monster energy drinks and Marlboro ice blast cigarettes in the world to keep me sane enough to continue. Given that I have gotten this far, means I should be expecting an aneurysm, emphysema, and kidney failure to all suddenly happen to me at any moment now. And yet, the show must go on, the pain must be endured, because I like torturing myself. I should have killed you when I had the chance. You can't kill us. You are Again, this is the same mission as Truth and Reconciliation except now there's Flood everywhere, with more of that infighting between you, the Covenant, and Flood, in copied and pasted rooms and hallways and teal bukake caverns. I'd like to be covered in one of those, but would preferably like to be fuck not as hard unless you politely asked. And to add insult to injury, you're only there to rescue keys, again, except you don't, because... He's one of them. Which means I could have killed him at the start of the game and this whole thing wouldn't have happened. Fuck you keys, for all that you've done to me. If only this game would let me put you down so you can go tend to the rabbits. Now the game pulls its last rabbit out of the hat, a new class of covenant, the spec ops. The spec ops grunts use fuel rod cannons like the hunters and when they are killed they explode. And the spec ops elites are as deadly as the zealots and now have the added bonus of throwing plasma grenades with such ferocity that it will make donut jealous. Man, that girl's got a really good arm. But fuck it, it's time to get the hell out of here, and blow this ring to high heaven and be done with this torture. And now we're back where we started. You could say we've gone full circle. But it's not as bad as what we've just endured. It makes up for all that by giving us a good finish. After trying to start the detonation of the Pillar of Autumn's reactor with the implants you had to rip out of Key's skull to get. The light bulb stops the countdown, further making my life a living hell to which I must endure for absolutely no reason but to experience more suffering. So now we're going to do the smart thing in this situation and blow the reactor up ourselves with a rocket launcher.
Fuck has ruined my pitiful attempt at an ode to joy sketch. Now that out of the way, now comes one of the most iconic moments in all of Halo. The Warthog Run. A race against the clock trying not to flip the Warthog too many times and pulling off some more sick drifting to the sound of the Halo theme song. make it scanning just dust and echoes we're all that's left we did what we had to do for earth an entire covenant armada obliterated and the flood we had no choice halo it's finished no i think we're just getting started What else is there to say, it's a good way to end the game. No lousy boss fight at the end, no cliffhanger, no sniper jackholes. God fucking damn it.